Are you a woman of faith or open-minded seeker, wanting to make a difference but find yourself asking, how can I heal my emotions and overcome the hurt, pain, and regrets of my past? How can I break free from the medical matrix and heal my mind and body holistically? How can I lose weight without losing my joy? How can I live in this world without being consumed by it? How can I have more of God's blessings, miracles, and protection over my life? If you resonate with any of these questions, you are in the right place, my sister. Welcome to the Sharing the Bliss podcast, where we help women of faith soothe their souls, heal their bodies, and live their bliss in a time like this. Join me, Coach Carmen Abercrombie, Certified Holistic Health Coach, author, speaker, and founder of Sharing the Bliss, and my co-host, Coach Denise Beecham, the Wellness Diva, on this weekly joyful transformational journey. Because regardless of your current circumstances, your breakthrough begins today. Welcome to the Sharing the Bliss podcast. I'm your host, Coach Harmon. And I'm Coach Denise. And this is episode number 10, where we continue the series on Detox Your Way to Health. Today, we're going to discuss the 10 must-dos to a healthy gut. Last week, we were discussing how detoxing promotes a healthy microbiome. And that was a powerful discussion, Coach Denise. Yes, it was. Yes, I was really excited. And I I, I just thought it was kind of funny because we're talking about the gut. And we were like, (laughs) we were getting, because we were getting revelation. Yes, we were. A lot of things were coming to us Mm -hmm. so that we can share with you and be blessed ourselves because this is such an important topic, beloved. And to know that you can detox your way to a healthy gut is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Coach Nis, let's get started. Absolutely. Okie dokie. So, as Coach Carmen said, the 10 must do's to heal your gut. So number one on the list, clean out your colon detox. The main thing is to detox as in the 28 day body and soul detox. You may also want to consider using enemas and colonics and take a good parasite cleanse. That's the one thing I haven't done yet. Hmm. I've done um, enemas. Well, I haven't done as many as I should, but I've definitely (laughs) done colonics. But I haven't taken a parasite cleanse. I haven't done that yet. Yes. So I'm interested in that. Yes. I've been using an excellent one. And I'm telling you, it makes a big difference. So those three things will definitely help you to clean out your colon. Nice. And it's always good to start with the cleaning of the colon, even before you start changing the food that you eat. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it really works hand in hand. It's like okay. trying to put in new furniture in a home before you cleaned out the house. Mm. You know, you didn't clean it out. Usually when you have new furniture coming in, you make sure you sweep, you get rid of the old stuff and, and prepare for the new. And that's what we're going to do by cleaning out the colon first. The second thing is a high raw organic vegan diet. Okay, so now we're cleaning, we're cleaning our house mm-hmm. and now we are bringing in healthy food yes organic vegan if possible and high raw and the reason being is that the high raw is going to feed the good bacteria and starve out the bad bacteria right that makes a lot of sense because the sugars and all of the unhealthy foods that we've Mm -hmm. been eating has just been building up that army of bad bacteria, all of the, the worms, the nasty oh, stuff that yeah. nobody wants to talk yeah. about. But if you <laughs> see pictures of them, you would not want them in your body. No. Unfortunately, they're in like 90% of Americans, if not more. Mm. Probably more like 95%. It's sad. I say 90. I'll be conservative. But the fruits and the vegetables that are raw will feed the good bacteria. And that's what you want. You want them strong and powerful. Right, because as we were saying last week, they will help you to support your immune system yes. and a plethora of so many other benefits. Make sure you watch that one again, because knowing the benefits will give you the motivation you need to do what you have to do to get your microbiome healthy. The other thing is sprouted whole grains and legumes. So yes, you can sprout lots of legumes. You can sprout grains. We do that often. In fact. Actually, last week during the Wellness Kitchen Wednesday, 
I prepared raw vegan strawberry muffins and I used some sprouted buckwheat. You don't have to, but you know, I did because I already had sprouted buckwheat cereal that I made from scratch. So I added that, turned it into a powder and added that into the really healthy flour that I used as a base for the muffins. So Denise, she was like, Oh, you, you better save me one of the muffins. Save me one of them. Save me one of the muffins. <laughs> so I did. So Coach Denise, she's actually eating it now. And I just wanted to get your opinion in front of the sisters as to how a raw vegan muffin can taste. Mm-hmm. She already, she I already ate some. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to get the first impression, but, but it is really, it is, it is really delicious. And I can see the strawberry in there. And if you taste a strawberry, it pops in your mouth. And I made sure that I filled it with strawberries. You have to watch that video. Mm. It's on the business page. All of the wellness kitchen Wednesday videos are on the sharing the bliss business page on Facebook. So it's actually facebook.com forward slash coach Carmen for you. I'll put it up there for you. Yeah. So you can come in and watch me live. Then I come back and I do the reveal and taste test. So, That's so good. <laughs> but what makes it amazing to me is that it looks like it's cooked and it tastes like it's cooked. It really does. You know, it's not like raw dough or anything like that. It really does. No. And it's dense. Like it has a density to it. Like you, when you eat it, you're going to be satisfied, satisfied, mm -hmm. but yet it's soft, right? And it's light. Like it's not going to like bloat heavy. you or, or heavy. sit heavy in your stomach, although it has a density to it. Yes. I love it. It's like the it best really of both. It really is good. Thank you. Delicious. It's like the best of both worlds, but those are the ways you can incorporate food that will feed your microbiome, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that you're going to enjoy, you know, just throw in some things in there that will, actually feed the good flora exactly yeah so the other thing is avoiding of course the processed foods mm -hmm. the sugars and the artificial additives right that is going to help you to clean out your gut now this reminds me of something we spoke about last week yeah remember we spoke about that yeah and this is the main culprit processed foods sugar and artificial additives yeah. That's the main culprit. So once you leave that and it's no longer a part of your daily intake, mm -hmm. you, it, your body can't help but to improve. So the next on the list is whole fiber intake, which means you're going to avoid processed fiber foods and you want to include a variety of fresh whole fruits and vegetables. So we're back to that again. We're back to that. So the fiber is important because it helps to push all of the waste out of your colon, mm -hmm. you know, so you want to push that out and going back to an awesome recipe for that. Another one is my raw vegan rats that are basically made with vegetables, but I add an ingredient in there that the colon just loves. Psyllium husk. The psyllium husk. Exactly. <laughs> That's the psyllium husk. The psyllium husk is great for cleaning out your colon. And it does it in such an easy, gentle way, Coach Anise. It's no griping, nothing like that. You just get up and you feel like you have to just release and eliminate. And it's a good feeling when you eliminate like that and it's like in bulk. You know, I know we're talking about stuff that most people don't want to talk about. <laughs> right, but, but these days... It's a good thing when you can have a full elimination and yes. you know, and you're not like pushing and griping and you know, for something that's like really all of that for this. No, you want it to be full and lush. And that's what happens when you add psyllium husk to some of your recipes. You know what I, I like about this? It immediately brings me back to the topics we were talking about last week. Okay, so now this one, we're talking about the whole fiber intake. And you mentioned that when you eliminate, it's, it's a complete elimination. Mm -hmm. And I think of times when I ate foods that literally contain very little fiber mm -hmm. and the elimination process was very incomplete. Like I can get up, but still don't feel like I had a complete mm -hmm. elimination. Mm -hmm. But this way, 
the healthier way with the fresh fruits and vegetables and the fiber, you can feel the difference in the elimination. You definitely can. You can feel the difference. And you know, for, for myself, you know, I, I think sometimes God allows certain issues for us to have, you know, that we do have, I'll say, because it really, it's back to the mess to mission. <laughs> your mess is your mission. Whatever you've been through, you can help somebody else to go through it easier, mm -hmm. right? Because you've been through it. And for me, that's why I keep going back to some of my stories because I have a lot of them, really. One of the issues I've had since a child is not having an easy elimination. And my father died of stomach cancer. So for me, this was important for me to get together. I had to get my act together with this because mm -hmm. even today, if I eat too much cooked food, Compared to the raw food, let's just say, if I eat cooked food, period, I am not going to have the natural ability to eliminate without either drinking a lot of water, doing a mm -hmm. lemon cucumber, something I have to do. That's just my, my makeup. Everybody is different. We're bio-individuals, right? But once I start back with the raw food, mm -hmm. It's on till the break of dawn. It's like, it's no problem. I wake up, boom, and it's just a natural occurrence. Exactly. With the raw food. You find that to be? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Amazing. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. So next on the list, we're going to talk about organic prebiotic foods. Mm. Prebiotic foods feeds the probiotics. Mm -hmm. And those foods include onions, garlic. Yes. Leeks, mm -hmm. asparagus, which is something I definitely I have to get into because I'm I have I've never had asparagus. And you know you can make them raw. Oh, I made them raw. Really, I slice them on a diagonal, nice you know thin, mm -hmm. and then I use my sauce that I like to use for my vegetables. Mm -hmm. Even though I've been tweaking that too, so I have some other options with my uh, raw oh, vegan okay, uh, okay. vegetable sauces. Okay. So yeah, and put it in a dehydrator, and you can make your cauliflower rice mm -hmm. with it or you can do your couscous with couscous. your vegetables oh raw, you know, okay raw vegan. Mm -hmm. all right so now i have a new recipe i can try yes. raw yes bananas unripened are best steel cut and sprouted oats mm -hmm. apples jerusalem artichokes chicory root yes dandelion greens barley flax seeds seaweed and unprocessed wheat. Yes. That's important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Unprocessed wheat. Yeah, because otherwise the wheat that we have on the market today in breads and all, that's going to feed the bad bacteria for okay. sure. You know, the way it's processed. Mm -hmm. Wheat berries. You can actually buy wheat berries. And what you do is you soak them and you sprout them. You dry them and then you can break them down and turn them into a whatever you're using, like if you're going to be making a raw cake or muffins or what have you. Oh, and so, yeah, okay. it's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's where the wheat bran originally comes from, but it goes through God knows how many stages before it gets to the supermarket. Meanwhile, you can buy the wheat berries and make so many different things. You can even make a drink called Rejuvalac. That's so, we're gonna talk about that. That's so good for your microbiome. Wow. Oh, All right. right. Next, we have hydration. Drink water throughout the day to support proper digestion and nutrient absorption. So that's very important because even if you are doing pretty well with the way you're eating, if you don't have enough water to flush everything out that needs to go out, you're still going to have some issues. So the water is so important. I mean, everybody knows it, but it's so easy to get off the water and start drinking other things and that's going to quench your thirst. But the reality is nothing quenches your thirst like water. water. And God created us that way for a reason. What is our bodies made up of? 80%. 80% water? I think so. So you know you have to replenish that if you want the body to function the way it's supposed to. Yes. So if we're not drinking the water, then we can expect to have problems. Yeah. We can expect to have issues. 
Okay. And with me, with water, I like what I like to call my good life water. And that's with the lemon and the cucumber. I just made some uh, this morning, as a matter of fact. Really? And I usually put more cucumber than lemon in it. I'll put like about 10 slices of cucumber in my pitcher and maybe two or three slices of lemon. Wow. Because the cucumber is that diuretic. It's very it's, hydrating. It's, yes, so. and very hydrating and refreshing, very refreshing. Instead of just, I mean, I drink bottled water and this, that, and the other, but that just makes me want to just constantly go back to the refrigerator and get more water. I'm excited that the season's changing and my mint is growing back. Yes. So what I love is the lemon sliced up in my water with a nice sprig of one of my mints. Yes. I have different variety of mints, but I love the sweet mint. Oh my goodness, that, so that's my fave. All right, <laughs> see? We just told you two ways you can make your water more palatable. Absolutely. <laughs> Probiotic foods. Yogurt, homemade with live and active cultures. Mm -hmm. Kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, mm -hmm. miso, which is one of my faves. Rejuvelac, fermented barley drink. Mm -hmm. Tempeh, natto, mm -hmm. fermented pickles, hmm. mm -hmm. fermented olives, Cha. kombucha. <laughs> Raw apple cider vinegar with the mother. Yes. Fermented soy products. Ensure they are non-GMO. Yes. Traditional buttermilk. Yeah. <laughs> That's good for you. Uh, yeah, I but might have to pass on that. Yeah, pass yeah, on but that if you, one. If you're okay with um, that, that's yes. an option. Thank God we had so many other options. Yes. Fermented vegetables. For example, carrots, beets, and radishes. Yes. Okay. That's a nice list. So if you want to pick from the, you don't have to have all of this. So you can actually choose which ones work better for you. Yes. You yes. know, pick out the ones that work better for you. Mm -hmm. For me, I like making my own homemade yogurt because the yogurt on at the store usually has the sugar and organic vegan yogurt. It's usually more costly than it should be. So when you make it yourself, you can definitely save some money and you just add the live cultures in there with a pro and prebiotic and mm -hmm. a powder, right? The kefir I make all the time. I have my kefir little angels <laughs> and they just keep growing and bringing me more and more kefir. And believe it or not, I like to use a milk kefir as opposed to water kefir because milk kefir definitely has a lot more benefits for helping to build up your gut microbiome. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it seems like it's a contradiction because it's made with milk, but the kefir grains turn the milk into kefir. So it's no longer milk. And I know this because it, I don't have any effects that I would have if I was drinking regular milk. Gotcha. Right? Mm -hmm. And once it's done, it almost looks like yogurt. It's nice and thick. I pour it in my smoothies to make my smoothies. Okay, nice. Yeah. For me is um, the miso. Oh yeah. I just like the way the mm. miso, when I make it into a broth and it just soothes my yes. stomach so well. Even if my stomach is not going through anything, it's just, it's, soothing. It's just very soothing to, you know, have on my stomach. And then I make, you know, your recipe with the soup and I, I just love it. That's one of my favorites. Mine too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just always go back to when Anthony, my husband, was very, very sick with COVID and he could not eat anything. The antibiotics uh, he was on because he had some other things that uh, COVID brought on. He had to be on antibiotics and they were giving him the side effects of having no desire to eat at all, right? but he was able to drink the soup and it was very soothing to him, right. very soothing. And for some reason, it just brings me back to that comfort that he had and seeing him heal, drinking that miso soup, right. you know, mm -hmm. so you're, you're right. There's something about that soup. And I think it's because it is feeding the microbiome. Mm -hmm. So because it's feeding the good guys, they make you feel good. Right. We were talking about that last week. Yes, we were. When you feed them and take care of them, they love you back. Yes. And they show you love by making you feel relaxed mm -hmm. and all of the benefits we discussed mm -hmm. last week. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Stress management. 
believe it or not, will help to heal your microbiome. Prayer, scripture reading, mindfulness, meditation, and deep breathing exercises. So, you know, we'll ask the question similar to what we were asking last week. Does that make sense to you? Like, how could that be a benefit? And I'll, let's ask Coach Nice. And I tell us definitely what she believe that it's a benefit. And I'm going to start at the top prayer, scripture reading, mindfulness, and meditation, because mm -hmm. I do this every morning. I get up and I do my prayer, my readings, and everything else that goes along with it. And on the days that I don't do it, I don't feel right. Mm. I just, I feel like my day is set when I do it. And when I don't follow my regimen and skip that, something is off for me. And how does that connect with your microbiome, you think? I believe that it induces like a stressfulness inside of me. And mm. a lot of times I'll eat something and my stomach will just not reject it, but it'll just like, okay, I'm not really feeling this. And I know it's because I'm tight because I didn't do, cause when, when you, I do that, it's, it's a relaxation. Mm -hmm. I'm relaxed, mm -hmm. you know, I'm motivated. Yes. I'm not tense. Like you can wake up feeling tense depending on how you slept. So you, you, this actually relaxes me and then I can go. And also what I've noticed that when I don't follow this, sometimes the rest of the day doesn't go in sequence either. Right. And that's not a good feeling for me. That induces stress. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's, the, that's what I think that's of when I think. see this. Yes. Yeah. And for me, you know, getting back to the whole concept of your gut being your second brain, right? Your guts, your second brain, right? It really makes sense that if you are under stress, your intestinal tract is going to know it. Mm -hmm. And it shows, I mean, if you think back during the times when you were stressed, how you just, you get the pains in your stomach, you may not be able to eliminate, you know, there's effects that your colon will show you to tell you that it's not relaxed due to too much stress in the body. Mm -hmm. I you agree. Know? So it does make I sense. It, it makes, it really makes a difference in the day. And of course, you know, the deep breathing exercises, you know, I'm, I'm yes. all up into that. Yeah. We both are. Yes. And I think that the best way to start a day is before you even get out of your bed, just start breathing. Cause when you're sleeping, you're breathing the way you're supposed to nice and deep and even and getting all the air in and exhaling it out, yes. but because you're <laughs> sleeping, but when you wake up, you want to like, continue that. Like you wake up, but you don't want to just like, just hop out of the bed and, and that's what people, hop right out of there. Do. We don't most stretch. Do. We just get up. But if you can just spend the, a, like two, maybe three mm -hmm. minutes just to continue that deep and restful breathing before you get out of the bed and do a, just a few stretching, you know, it makes a difference. Cause then you get up and you're calm, you know, you can focus a little bit more instead of thinking, Oh God, let me get up. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to go here. I got to go there. But when you relax and it brings it back to that meditation, that breathing, and yeah, and it brings you back to the colon being relaxed, mm -hmm. being relaxed enough to do what it needs to do and to take care of us. And like you said, the first thing in the morning doing that, you're telling your body that this is how we're going to deal with this day. Yes. All right. Stomach, Peaceful, intestinal calm. tract. This is how we're going to deal with the day. You know, a lot of women and men, but we're talking to our sisters. They're on these different, what are those over-the-counter pills that they, Tums and the different yes. things, antacids yes. and all these things that they're like popping them, you know, because of the stress that they have in their lives is causing the stomach upsets, yep. you know. And I'll give you a little tip here. Give us a tip. Coach. Those breathing exercises that you do first thing in the morning will actually promote elimination because you are relaxing the gut. You know, the next step <laughs> is exercise. The next step is exercise mm -hmm. for increased gut motility, more regular bowel movements, a more healthy, diverse gut microbiome, very important, decreased risk of colon cancer and improvement of your gut. 
Exercise. Exercise. Mm -hmm. My goodness. That's amazing. But I, I think we were talking about this a while ago, and I was saying that when I was training to be a Pilates instructor, it was a lot of core work. And I can still remember, because remember at that time I was still having the issues with my digestion and constipation and all that. But when we were training for our certification, it was a lot of core work. And I would feel like I may have to stop this class and go to the bathroom. That's, that's <laughs> because what's up. everything was stimulated in there now, you yes. know? For the first time in who knows how long. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's, That's amazing. why we were saying that it's some of this, it's that, and throw that in there too. Yes. <laughs> so yep. Mixed bag. Yes. Of what you have to do to stay healthy, my sisters. Make sure you are balanced in it all. Mm -hmm. It's not a hardship because once you get your flow on and you have your routine, mm -hmm. it's boom, boom, boom. You got this. You exactly. really do. Next, number nine is sleep quality quality of sleep. Prioritize getting enough sleep each night as an adequate sleep can negatively impact gut health. Yes. Why is that? Well, you know, sleep actually boosts the metabolism and the digestion. So much. A lot. So that I believe that that's what yep. this actually means because you, you know how if you eat a really heavy meal, the first thing your body wants to do is sleep mm -hmm. because now it's ready to, to kick relax that digestion into get overtime. Into, yes. Right. So that you can, it wants you to relax. Yes. So it can so do, it what, can it do what it do. needs to do. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because while you're sleeping, everything is just like rebooting mm -hmm. and setting up for you to be ready for the next day's activity and the next day of health and vitality to do what you need to do. God is so awesome. He created us in such a wonderful way. Exactly. It really is amazing. Yes. So. And that's a good question when, if someone asked, how does inadequate sleep impact gut health? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's a question that would, that could stump some people yep. at times, you know, really, I didn't know that if you didn't get enough sleep, it could impact it. But I know that if I don't get enough rest for me, put in particular, my heart doesn't beat the way it should be. It just like drags on. So if now it's not pumping the way it should be, so that means I'm probably not going to eliminate the way I need to either. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's all, we're all, it's all connected, it's all connected. like that. Mm -hmm. It surely is. And last but not least, Coach Denise. Medication use. Be mindful of the potential effects of medications such as antibiotics, NSAIDs, or proton pump inhibitors on gut health. That's really interesting because I used to use a proton pump inhibitor for asthma. Yes. And I never knew that it could affect, it could affect my gut health. I knew about antibiotics doing that. Because I mean, when you're taking them, it literally wipes out causes, <laughs> so many of the good bad uh, yes, guys. Yes, causes right? the issue. And I knew about the NSAIDs because of the fact that they can cause bleeding, bloating, things like that. Wow. Stomach pain and stuff like that. That I already knew about, but I did not know about the, the pump inhibitors. So this is interesting. Really and truly though, all you have to do is look at the commercials on television. The contraindications are of so many medications. Mm -hmm. They will tell you about the things that you can get as a side effect from the medications. They yeah. even talk about some of the medications for leaky gut can cause tears in the gut. I'm like, wait a minute. You're, t get, you're telling me to take this medication for this, but you're telling me the medication may cause what I'm taking the medication for. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's cray cray. It's crazy. So that's another thing, my sisters. Do your research. If you're on medication, go online and see what the medications can be causing. You know, things don't just happen by happenstance. Usually if you have some kind of strange something occurring in your body all of a sudden, it's usually some reason for it to happen. I mean, sometimes things just happen. I mean, people end up with 
they can have a brain aneurysm or something like that. It can happen. But there are so many more things that can happen that, that happens that we can put our finger on. Mm. You know, if you go down the rabbit trail to see what, what you've been doing. And lots of times, if you're on medication, that should be the first thing to consider. Check out what the medication and what it could be doing. I always read the side effects of all medications that I get. Because sometimes that is the deciding factor on whether or not I'm going to take it. Should always you know, be. No, I'm, I'm ready to go back and say, listen, can I get something different? Can you prescribe something different? Because I'm not really um, comfortable, comfortable with these side effects. Yes. And then also, I would like to address the antibiotics. Oh. Be, you know, when you take an antibiotic, you should also take a probiotic. Yes. Not at the same time, because you don't want to you know, take yeah. away from what the antibiotic is right. supposed to do. But like hours after you take the antibiotic, you can take the, the probiotic. Mm -hmm. And also with NSAIDs, a lot of people pop those with no food. Mm. And so now it's on an empty stomach. So you can coat the stomach first. Like if you, if you're um, having breakfast or something, or you have a smoothie and you can take it with that, it's going to coat the stomach mm -hmm. and, and protect it against whatever is the NSAIDs do to cause the bleeding. Yes. Be and, and the good thing about this is if you are doing the 28 day body and so detox and you learned how to eat healthier and you change, you may end up taking less of these NSAIDs than you were before you started no the doubt. detox. No doubt. You know, you know what I mean? And, and you know, let that, that, I'm going to let that be a caveat to say that if you're on medication, you don't take yourself off medication, right. my sisters. You never do that. You, if the doctor puts you on medication, you have to work with him. Have him work with you. You both work together mm -hmm. to wean yourself off of medication. Right. Because so many medications are systemic these days. They go into the cellular walls, into the cellular structure, and you can't just it's just you can't just stop it. Because it's active, it's part of you now. It's like trying to pull yourself out of a rabbit hole, you know, that's right. really tight and you squeeze yourself in there. Now mm -hmm. you're trying to yank mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. out. out. It's not going to be pretty. Mm. You know, in fact, my dear brother, my baby brother passed away from taking himself off of medications. One of the things he, he got sicker, he had a, an issue with um, these different like polyps on his uh, liver and he actually, uh, yeah, and when he took himself off the medication, they multiplied. Mm -hmm. So he had to be hospitalized and he passed away in the hospital, you know. So I'm just saying that I want to make sure you understand that even if we say some things that are not very positive about certain medications or whatever, if you're on it, don't take yourself off of it. Always seek medical support. If you let the doctor know you want to be weaned off. Right. And then he's going to say, okay, well, you're going to have to prove to me that you deserve, or not deserve, but that you are ready to be taken off. Right. Which means you have to do your part. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. they're going to test you. I mean, if you if they don't like your numbers, they're not going to wean they're you. They're not going to wean so you. So you're doing your part and your numbers go down, your blood pressure goes down, your cholesterol levels go down, and they see that you don't need that medication as much, they will start to wean you off like my doctor did for me, you know, but it, it wasn't just wake up one day and stop taking it. No. I had, it took him six weeks to wean me off of that medication. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's extremely important. Mm -hmm. All right. So we had the good guys, then we had the bad guys. And then we started eating, changing the way we ate. Mm -hmm. We did the detox. We cleaned out our bodies. And we started to incorporate food that feeds the good guys. And the good guys were like, okay, we're ready to rumble. <laughs> and the bad guys were like, really? You think you're bad enough to take us down? And next thing, next thing you know, there's a rumble in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and it is wild up in there.
and there's war up in there. And mm -hmm. that's why we say trust the process. I always say trust the process because when you're going through some type of transformation in your body, it's not going to always be pretty at the beginning. Right. You know, things are going to look a little wild. Feel You're going to feel certain ways, but you know you're doing the right thing. If you know you're doing the right thing, you trust the process. Right. But you also have to be in tune with the Holy Spirit too. Amen. Because we are bio-individuals. And sometimes what's good for one person isn't good for the other mm -hmm. person. So you have to really be sensitive to your own body. Yes. Hear from God, mm -hmm. right? And do the right thing. Do what you know to do. To, that you know is going to help you it can't hurt you there's something water is only going to help you right eating yes. fruits and vegetables unless you're allergic to a vegetable mm -hmm. is only going to help you detoxing your body should only help you but still always be aware of what's going on with your body my sisters yes and we look forward to you joining us for the next 28 day body and soul detox Right. It's going to be fun. It's going to be amazing. Yes. You can always message us. You can go to sharingthebliss.com forward slash detox. Or you can contact Coach Denise on Facebook Messenger. Contact me, Coach Carmen, Carmen Abercrombie on Facebook Messenger. And make sure you download this beautiful guide. I'm going to get up and show it to you so you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, sisters. So we'll see you next week when we start a new episode. And we're going to be talking about something that women have been going through. Menopause. We're going to be talking about menopause. Yes. 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 Okay. And how to have a graceful, easy transition because it doesn't have to be as bad as it may be it's with you right now. It doesn't have to be. And if you're peri, you don't have to go into the throes of menopause. There are some simple, solutions. easy solutions, yes. tweaks. Yes. Trust me. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> All right, ladies. God bless you, my sisters. I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope you were blessed by this episode. If so, Please be a blessing by liking and subscribing so that we can reach more sisters like you. Be sure to click the link in the show notes to download this episode's juicy free resource. And let's stay connected. Join our Sacred Self-Care Sisterhood Facebook group with daily inspiration for your body and soul designed to awaken the kingdom heiress you truly are. Like our business page, where you can join me live for weekly food demos, self-care tips, and emotional healing support. Visit the website for a complete list of our programs and support tools. Beloved, life doesn't get better by simply praying. It gets better by receiving the support you need to get what you've been praying for. Set up your complimentary health and wellness support call by simply filling out my health and wellness assessment form and scheduling your call. See all details in the show notes below. And remember, you can soothe your soul, heal your body, and live your bliss in a time like this.